that Iowa flag that says, our liberties we prize and our rights we will maintain. The reason that language is on that flag is because New Hampshire already beat us to the language that says, live free or die. Yeah. Yeah. Chair recognizes the gentleman from Harrison, Representative Winschittle, for opening remarks on House File 2381. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Good morning, Mr. Speaker. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen of the House. Uh, the bill that we have before us is very simple. Uh, what it will do is bring Iowa in line with 39 other states uh, by allowing our citizens to be able to go through the process of legally obtaining a firearm suppressor. Uh, there are a lot of regulations that go in with this uh, from the federal government. Uh, some of those regulations are an extensive background check, $200 tax stamp, uh, approval from the ATF, and there's some other ones that are there as well. I'm sure most of the members here have looked through some of the information that's been sent out and have a good working knowledge of that. This is a good bill, and I think it is a prime opportunity for us to expand a freedom and a liberty that Iowans deserve. Like I said, 39 other states already allow their citizens to be able to possess these. I don't think Iowans should be restricted from having them. I understand there are some concerns that are out there, but in all of the research that I've done, uh, I can find no, no statistical data, no empirical data, uh, that any other state that has these legalized, where there's an increase in crime or they've been used for nefarious purposes or anything of that nature. Everything that I've read that would be negative as to why we should not allow citizens to have these is pure, purely speculative. Uh, it's, well, the what if, well, what if this or what if that. I don't think that we should be restricting Iowans' rights and freedoms based upon a what if. I believe that we should allow our citizens who are reasonable, responsible, are not prohibited from having a firearm and not prohibiting from having one of these uh, suppressors to be able to go through the process, and it is an extensive process, to be able to obtain one of these and use them for shooting sports. That, Mr. Speaker, concludes my opening remarks. There is an amendment. Clerk, call up the amendment. H8043 by Wessel Cashel of Story. Chair, recognize the lady from Story, Representative Wessel Cashel, for opening remarks on Amendment H8043. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen of the House. I ask unanimous consent to withdraw this amendment. Lady asks for unanimous consent to withdraw Amendment H8043. Are there objections? The chair hears none so ordered. That disposes of all amendments. We are now on House File 2381. Is there a discussion? The chair recognizes the lady from Johnson, Representative Masher. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Would Representative Winchell yield, please? Will the gentleman yield? Your yes. Order. Representative Winchell, are silencers um, regulated by the federal government at this time? Yes. So can a person uh, get a silencer, suppressor, whichever you want to call it? You say um, potato, I say potato. Certainly. Um, can they get one now through a federal means? A In citizen of, of Iowa? Sure. Uh, no, uh, the average everyday citizen, like you and I, are not able to legally purchase or possess a suppressor in the state of Iowa. Um, I guess what I, I am questioning is it says silencer among, silencers are among the few accessories regulated by the National Firearms Act. To purchase or transfer a silencer, you must acquire a special license. Enter the serial number in a federal registry and pay a $200 fee, the fee which is equal to um, a ban because in, it was enacted in 1934 and it hasn't been adjusted for 79 years. So isn't there already a procedure for getting one? No, Iowa has a redundant ban. Under the uh, current Iowa Code 724.1 subsection 8, a firearm suppressor is specifically listed as an offensive weapon in Iowa Code. Okay. That's what the legislation before us will do. It will strike that reference as an offensive weapon, and then it adds a new section saying that a citizen can go through the correct proper channels to be able to obtain a suppressor as long as they're complying with the federal government regulations that are already in existence. So is there a current loophole in that federal law? Not for Iowa citizens, no. Are corporations allowed to get silencers? In states where they are expressly, um, in states where they are legal, yes. But in Iowa, a corporation cannot go out and get one. There, w there would be no way for them to uh, uh, apply for a silencer and, and get one? No, to my knowledge, the only person or company in Iowa, companies that can legally possess a suppressor are class two or class three federal firearms licensed dealers. 
uh, and they are either manufacturers and or sellers of these, but they don't sell them within the state unless it's to uh, military or outside of the state to where suppressors are legal. Okay, and then what, what exactly is your purpose for putting this bill forward? Advancing Iowa's freedoms and liberties. So it has nothing to do with hearing loss or anything of that nature? That's one of the major components of it, yes. I mean, there's, okay. there's, you, you, people will argue that there is a safety aspect to these, and it's a completely legitimate argument. This will reduce the overall decibel rating of a uh, fired firearm, but there's multiple different purposes out there aside from that as well. Okay, thank you, Representative Winchettle. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll be voting no on this bill today, and I've done some research too and also looked into some of the states. First of all, they aren't truly silencers in that you cannot hear them at all. And I think you would probably agree with that, Representative Winschittle. But by muffling the noise generated with every shot by a sonic boom or a gas release, a silencer would provide a new degree of intimacy for public mass murder. Delaying by crucial seconds or minutes the moments when someone can call the police after overhearing strange bangs coming from a theater or classroom. The same qualities that make silencers the accessory of choice for targeted assassins offer advantages to the armed psychopath set on indiscriminate mass murder. So I think there are concerns in terms of delaying the ability for a teacher or someone else in a theater to be able to contact the police and stop what you would hope would never happen to any of us or our children. So I do not believe that this is necessary. I think if it's a hearing issue, there are earplugs, there are headphones, there are other ways to address that. I do not believe this is necessary at all. Aside from offering a fairly, very expensive alternative to earplugs, there is no conceivable sporting or personal defense purpose served by pouring silencers into a gun market dominated by semi-automatic semi pistols and assault rifles. If history offers any useful clues, and it usually does, the answer is none. The history of the silencer is a 20th century tale populated by the mafia hits, hidden snipers, special ops, and ambush teams. If it all adds up to decades worth of negative branding baggage that the gun lobby is now trying to scrub away like a used car salesman winding back the speedometer on a lemon, I do not think putting more of these into hands of people in our state is necessarily a good thing. And I do think that there are un hidden concerns and problems that we should be talking about and we should be addressing. Because every time you delay someone's ability to get help, if their silencer ends up in the wrong hands, we are putting people in our state at risk. And I am not willing to do that. I do not believe this is a necessary bill. I don't think it is something that the majority of Iowans would support. And I doubt very uh, readily that you have any evidence to show otherwise. I have not received any kind of emails supporting this and thinking this is something that we definitely should do. So I'll be voting no today, and I hope others will as well. Thank you. Chair, can I the story, Representative West Michelle. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen of the House. I served on this subcommittee for this bill, and I'm not sure whether I want to thank Representative Wolf for that opportunity or not, because I, um, it's, it's a, been a learning curve for me. I, I have to admit I have no um, strong background in guns and firearms. And I've created over the years, though, when we have addressed firearm issues, uh, kind of a litmus test for when I will or will not support a bill de dealing with firearms. And, and that litmus test is, will it create a safer environment in our schools, in our malls, in our theaters, or for the general public? There's been a lot of information, and it's readily available, about expanding access to firearms. There's a strong lobby and there's a lot of money behind it. And the other side doesn't have very much money. And, and in response to everybody who's written to me that a 
suppressor or a silencer is much like a muffler on a car, this is something I'm very familiar with. I live south of campus in Ames, Iowa, south of Iowa State University, about five blocks. And when a car goes by my house without a muffler on, I wake up. When a car goes by my house with a muffler on, I don't wake up. And I live kind of on a busy street, so, and you know, a lot of students don't have money to buy mufflers. This is something I'm well aware of. It's loud. It, it brings to my attention that there's somebody in the neighborhood late at night driving their car, which, again, when it's used on a firearm, it would bring to attention the people in the area that something is happening. I need to represent my district as all of you do. And so I went out and asked my constituents what they thought of this bill. And I have to tell you, there was a lot of stunned silence, like, how could you even ask me? Some things I probably can't repeat. I talked to a high school student who says, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Now what are you going to do to protect us? There's a group that I always like to refer to as the bus stop moms, but I'm going to be fair, there are some dads there. I've gathered there for many, many years, dropping my kids off to take the bus to elementary school. And I still have contact with those people, and it's an expanding group. Now they're the moms with the younger children, and we email and have coffee on a frequent basis. They don't have a lobby group. And there's nobody out, you know, there's no money behind uh, what they have to say. But the day after Newtown, I know that the conversations were striking about what we need to do to protect our children. I talked to a target shooter and a hunter, and both, and he said, I wear protection, there's no need for this bill. Last fall, Ames High School, the biggest high school in my district, was locked down and then put in a shelter in place because of perceived violence on campus. Given social media, it's really easy for all of us to hear what's going to happen or what's happened. You know, there were children who weren't coming home for lunch who usually come home for lunch, and they were texting their mom, we're on lockdown. We don't know why we're on lockdown. I'm going to tell you there are a lot of moms whose hearts skipped a few beats that day. We are on hypervigilance because of incidents like Newtown and Aurora, and day in and day out, we are hearing about deaths due to gun violence. I heard stories of students crying under desks on that day. And now I'm hearing stories that there are school districts across Iowa who have security systems who are on constant lockdown. So in order to get into your school, to pick up a sick child, to go to parent-teacher conferences, you have to ring yourself in, you have to identify why you're there, there are cameras out. We're scared, all of us are scared about gun violence. I've told my constituents, I've given them Representative Winshittle all the information that you gave me on how, you know, it's going to cost $200 uh, transfer tax fee, fee, fee per suppressor. That there's a strong background check. But if you do a little bit more digging, because you have to do more digging when you don't have a lobby group out there representing the other position or another position, what you find out is there are loopholes. I mean, we know that there are loopholes at gun shows when you buy uh, firearms. We also know that trusts and corporations, if you buy through a trust or a corporation or a, get a gun through a trust or a corporation, there's no there's no background check. And if I read 
this information correctly, an 18-year-old can possess a suppressor as a beneficiary of a trust or, or corporation. That raises concerns. This may be the best piece of firearms legislation. I know that there are a lot of people out there supporting it that's come to the floor of the House. It might be. But I can assure you that my district needs more, <laughs> more education if this really is a good piece of legislation. My district's not ready for this. This legislation does not meet my litmus test that firearms, uh, for firearms legislation, that it provide more safety from gun violence in schools, theaters, malls, or to the general public. It probably will increase the risk of firearm, of gun violence. It's been a pleasure working with you, Representative Winschittle. Um, and I welcome more information and more education into my district. Thank you. I will oppose the bill. Chair, recognize General Polk, Representative Abdul Samad. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen of the House, would the representative yield to a couple questions? Will the gentleman yield? You're in order. For my friend, yes. Thank you. And I appreciate you calling me your friend, because we are. Uh, just a point of clarification for me. You know, the bill now, if this bill passes, individuals will have access, would a private citizen like myself have access to being able to acquire a suppressor? After you go through the, if you meet the federal government's requirements of the background check, and I mean, it's an arduous process. It, you're going to wait anywhere from 30 to 30 days to six months. Um, give them passport photos, fingerprint cards, uh, fill out a federal form, send that into them, tell them what make, model, serial number of suppressor you're going to buy, where you're going to buy it at. And then once they actually approve that, send a $200 tax stamp on top of that so they can process all that paperwork. If they then approve that and you pass a background check and you're not prohibited for some other reason to not be able to possess a suppressor or a firearm, they'll then send that paperwork back to wherever the dealer is that you're purchasing the suppressor through. That dealer will then call you and say you can come pick up your suppressor. And then you're going to pay anywhere from $500 to $2,000 depending upon the quality of suppressor that you want to buy. So long answer, but yes, they will if they meet all of the other criteria that the federal government already regulates. Okay. Representative, Representative Masher brought out that right now, and you clarified that in certain states, corporations and actually can purchase without going and sell without background checks. Is that correct? I do not believe that that is accurate. I called, um, I called some people that are involved in this industry in other states, and I said, hey, you know, there's, you've got the question here about if you build a gun trust or you have an LLC or a corporation, if there's multiple people involved in that. If I'm the person that goes in to purchase the suppressor, am I not going through a background check? And they said, absolutely not. I mean, any dealer out there that has a Class 2 or Class 3 license from the federal government, an FFL, Federal Firearms License, it, my family's got one. I'm not going to put the shop at risk by not going through a background check. So I don't think that that's accurate that people who have corporations or gun trusts are not going through background checks. Keep in mind, all right, let, let's just play it out for a moment and say that they don't go through a background check, which I'm not saying is true. The ATF still has every opportunity to deny that application. The dealer does not have to sell that. The dealer would not feel comfortable without making sure that all their P's and Q's are taken care of and making sure that their, well, their backside's covered because they don't want to lose their license or their livelihood. So okay. I don't think that it's accurate that someone who has a gun trust or a corporation is just walking into a dealer going, hey, here's my trust and corporation. I'll take that one and that one and walk out the door. That's not the case. They still have to be approved by the ATF. Okay, but if it is true, and then that means that if, if it's possible for them to purchase that without going through the same process that I would have to go through, then I could also then go through them and possibly purchase it, if it's true. The potential would be, or the answer to that is yes, if it's true. But okay. again, in everything, all the research that I've done and all the people that I've talked with, that is not the case. Keep in mind, the ATF could change these rules at any time. The legislation we have before specifically states that you have to comply with the regulations um, administered by the federal government. That's true whether we have that in the bill or not, but it's there. So if the ATF goes out and changes those rules, which they very well could, we're still going to have to comply with them as individual citizens. Okay. Thank you, Representative. I really appreciate it. Representative Masher, would you yield for a question? Will the lady yield? Yes. You're in order. Representative Masher. 
from what you said and from I heard from your questioning is that you, right now you believe it is true that if a corporation, if we pass this bill, a corporation would, or someone would be able to purchase that without going through the background? Well, this is part of the concern because we know there's a gun show loophole in, in our federal law and laws that do not require background checks. So someone can purchase a gun at a gun show uh, without going through that check. And so the concern is, is that would that also apply then to a silencer where they could also get that same suppressor, silencer, without going through a check. Thank you, Representative. Uh -huh. Would Representative Shaw yield? Will the gentleman yield? You're in order. Neighbor. Yes. Could you tell me, you, you are a police officer, correct? I am, uh, yes. If, you know, and I don't have my, you know, police chief or anyone here, so I hope you don't mind me asking your question. If these silencers were able to get our suppressor were able to get into the wrong hands because we now made it possible for in the state of Iowa, what does that threat does that bring, bring, bring to police officers from those who do practice illegal activity? There's, uh, there's no increased threat uh, for law-abiding citizens to own a suppressor. As a matter of fact, I'm glad you asked the question because you can go to YouTube and uh, just uh, you know, do a search for, for suppressors and silencers, homemade, and anybody with, with anybody uh, mechanical inclination in their own garage can, can make a suppressor. You don't have to buy one commercially. Okay. So the question is, is are we going to uh, continue to make Iowans a criminal or continue to ban them to have something that they can make themselves anyway? Okay, but it doesn't... Uh Create I, I, a safety I do not, for as a, for, as, a peace I'm saying. as a peace officer, I see no uh, increased threat to the safety of police officers. Okay, my question is though, if it gets into individuals who practice illegal activity, because we do agree, agree that illegal activity is practiced in Iowa and shooting, don't we agree with that? Sure, I wish it wasn't, all, but there's all kinds of dangerous illegal activity. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The reason why I brought it up is the fact that I, I work in a lot of the urban communities and I, and I live in the urban community. And when you read the newspaper, there's been increased shootings in those communities, there's been increased shootings nationally in schools and other areas. You know, unfortunately, that we do have, we, we do have laws and unfortunately we have those that don't obey the laws. We have individual young people that have acquired weapons that they have not been able, that they can't purchase. They don't go to a gun shop. They don't take ID. They don't go through any process whatsoever. But we have police officers that work around the clock and we have citizens that live in communities that don't feel safe because these young people are obtaining these weapons and they're obtaining weapons that are Glocks and they're obtaining weapons that aren't just little pea shooters or you know, pellet guns. These are weapons that are killing individuals, not only in schools, but in neighborhoods. I have a neighbor that was on the news uh, a few months ago and said, the reporter asked him, you know, well, how do you feel about all the gunshots that are being fired and the houses being shot at? And that individual said, it's something I have now gotten used to. I think it's criminal when an elder in our community gets used to gunfire. You know, and I got to thinking about if we start making it, you know, so it's easy for individuals to illegally get this to these young people, then we're creating another safety hazard within a community. We're creating another situation to where without regulations, without looking at this bill even more in depth, without causing that, we are causing individuals that have a fear of coming out of the house after a certain hour. I live in community that has that fear. I talk to people that have that fear. I'm asking you to vote no on this until we can look at it more in depth, until we can look at securing our police officers, because I do have police officers in my community, Representative Shaw, that are concerned you know, that are concerned about the safety and their own safety. And I have a concern for them as I have concern for the babies in our community. 
because I also live in a community to where there's a park and that we work hard to keep that park safe where children have experienced gunfire and had to go and duck and hide. That's a very serious concern of mine. So I ask you to vote no on this. Let's look at it more. Representative, thank you for bringing it because I understand why, you know, we will always disagree when it comes to a lot of your gun bills, you know, in my community, but we always will be friends without a doubt. But I also invite you to my community at some point to come and talk to some of the neighbors, you know, and to visit a community that sometimes, especially this past year, has lived under fear. You know, and I hope you accept that invitation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Chair, sure, recognize Lady Sarah Gordo, Representative Steckman. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen of the House, um, I'd like to commend Representative Abdul Samad on his comments. Um, they bring up my vision of Sandy Hook, though that was a law abiding citizen with weapons in her home that her son took. She could have easily have had a silencer. How many more little kids might have been shot with a silencer before people were aware of what was going on? Um, but that I also wanted to make a point. Yesterday we debated for an hour and a half on regulating drones. An hour and a half we debated on that bill. Today we're debating a, a bill about silencers. Those two things were never brought to my attention by any constituent. I, I didn't have one constituent that said, please go to the state capitol and pass a bill to legalize silencers. Please go to the capitol and legalize or regulate those, um, those drones. No one contacted me for that. People contacted me for foster care. They contacted me for human trafficking, for education, for elder abuse, for, for Medicaid and Medicare issues, a lot of other things that I think we need to be focusing on. That's where we should be putting our attention. So um, I guess I'm going to side with Governor Branstad on this because in 1983, the seventh bill he signed into law was a ban on silencers. So I'm going to vote with Governor Branstad today and vote no. <laughs> Chair, can I gentleman from Dubuque, Representative Eisenhart. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Would Representative Winchield yield for a question? Will the gentleman yield? Yes. You're in order. Thank you, Representative. Uh, did Representative Pettengill warn you that I'd be doing this? No. Okay. <laughs> Try to stay one step ahead of here. Uh, I'm reading an article here as the debate goes on. It says the National Rifle Association endorsed the use of silencers to prevent hearing loss, and they did that in 2011. Do you have any research that shows the incidence and significance of hearing loss among gun users? It's prolific. You can just go out to any shooting um, enthusiast that's been doing it all their life, and I'm, there's well, members of this caucus that have been. Certainly. Uh, thank you. Certainly anecdotal evidence, but has there been any scientific research? It is not anecdotal. Do you, let me answer your question. It is not anecdotal because these folks have gone out, they've gone to the audio, audiologists, and they have uh, absolutely a medical hearing loss. And it can be related to the instances that they've gone out and they've shot without hearing protection, or they have shot with hearing protection, but they're shooting a larger caliber, and it still penetrates that hearing protection. So, yes, there is evidence. No, it's not anecdotal. I trust that it's happened to some people. I'm wondering if there's been any research, say, at the Department of Public Health, either Iowa or elsewhere, that seeks to d determine what percentage of hunters or users suffer from some hearing loss or, or what kind of other things that might be attributable to some, some controlled uh, research? I'm not aware of any government-run study on the topic, no. Okay, thank you, Representative Winchettle. Chair recognizes the gentleman from Polk, Rose of Hagenau. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, ladies and gentlemen of the House, uh, I just wanted to uh, try and get us back on track here a little bit because I thought we were talking about allowing law-abiding citizens the opportunity to, uh, to have these uh, devices on their firearms, not the criminals. Um, and uh, I just if someone's intent on breaking the law, uh, I don't know why the legality of or, or Ill illegality of a suppressor is going to make one bit of difference to them if they're willing to commit a crime with a firearm. It seems to me they would do that anyway. So I just wanted to make sure that we were talking about a very common sense bill about Iowa's Second Amendment rights. 
And uh, it's, it's disappointing that we have to kind of resort to um, scare tactics and what seems like some of that uh, we've devolved into in this debate. There's some very legitimate concerns about uh, what's happened in our country in different areas, but uh, I think we need to make sure that we keep everything in uh, perspective when we debate anything having to do with the Second Amendment and make sure that we stay on topic about what it is we're ex actually talking about here. Uh, on the point of who's contacted us, I have heard from a lot of Iowans about this. Hundreds, actually, that are in my email box as I went in and looked at. I've heard from uh, local elected officials uh, in my own district who support this bill. I've heard from county attorneys in Iowa who support this bill. And uh, so this idea that this is just something that nobody wanted is just, uh, at least as far as my perspective here, is just uh, completely false. So I appreciate Representative Winschittle bringing the bill up here, and I think it's a, uh, a very common sense thing that it's time to do for the people of Iowa. Thank you. Chair sure, recognizes the lady from Story, Representative West Rochelle, for a second time. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and ladies and gentlemen of the House, and uh, Representative Haganah brought up a, an interesting a uh, point that I've been thinking about and, and wondering about. Um, I understand the Second Amendment and the right to bear arms, and maybe if in his closing comments, Representative Winchittle would address the Second Amendment right of muffling <laughs> your firearms. I'm, I'm not sure that's in, in, in the Constitution. No way do I read that into the Constitution. And um, so I, I would love to hear your, your comments on that in your closing comments. Thank you. Seeing no further discussion, the chair recognizes General Harrison Ripson Winchittle for closing remarks on House File 2381. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Good morning, Mr. Speaker. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen of the House. Yet once again, it, there's been a lot of points made here today. I do appreciate the debate. Uh, Representative Abdul Samad, I will definitely take you up on your offer to come to your community. I have no problem talking with Iowans from all over the state, so at some point, let's arrange that. Um, there are some points that were made that I will try to, uh, that I do want to bring up and address. Um, the thought that this is by allowing Iowans, law abiding citizens, to be able to have a suppressor, which is a mere attachment onto a firearm, which down on the rabbit trail, uh, you have to have fitted to a firearm. So it's not like you just go out and buy it and then slap it on the end of a firearm. You actually have to have them fitted in most cases. Um, but to insinuate that somehow allowing law-abiding citizens to be able to have that attachment on the end of their firearm is going to create more violence or allow for other tragedies to happen because someone's not hearing the shot uh, as readily as what they would without a suppressed weapon I, I find that just ludicrous. 39 other states have the, allow their citizens the ability to be able to possess a suppressor legally. Law-abiding citizens then go out, petition their federal government, pay a $200 tax stamp, and then whatever the cost of the suppressor may be, then they get it, they attach to their firearm, and there's been no statistical data, no empirical data that says that has risen or that has uh, made crime rates rise. I've been reading different case studies on this, different topics over the past 10 years about suppressors, the states that have legalized them. Has there been any increase? There hasn't, because we're talking about law-abiding citizens, people who abide by the law, people who just want to exercise their constitutional rights. Representative Eisenhart, you asked me if there was any studies about hearing loss. Yes, there are. I answered your question. I'd also ask you and challenge you. I'm not asking you to yield, but. Give me some empirical data. Show me where a law-abiding citizen using a suppressor is going to increase crime. Show me where it's happened in the 39 other states that allow it. I, I would say that you probably can't because I've looked for it and I cannot find it. Representative Wessel Cushell, you asked for how suppressors are put into the Second Amendment. It is an attachment on the end of a firearm. It's an accessory. It's just like an attachment on your car. Uh, there are multiple different accessories that go on firearms, whether it be sights or scopes, uh, different types of stocks or hand grips. This is just an added feature. Unfortunately, it's highly regulated by the federal government. Let's lift that regulation and allow law-abiding citizens to be able to exercise this right. Uh, as Representative Hagenau said, Representative Masher, I've gotten hundreds and hundreds of emails. I, I'm surprised that you haven't gotten a single one, but I almost guarantee you that at the close of this debate today, you're probably going to get quite a few, uh, and over the next couple of weeks, you're going to continue to get some, because there are people across the state of all walks of life, Republican, Independent, and Democrat alike, that want the opportunity to be able to exercise this right. 
It's a simple bill, folks. I would encourage the folks that are out there watching this debate right now, look it up online, House File 2381. It's simple. It allows you to be able to exercise your rights. Mr. Speaker, I move the legislation. General Harrison moves the bill read for last time, placed on its passage. Are there objections? Chair here's none. The clerk will read. House File 2381, a bill for an act concerning the possession of firearm suppressors being enacted by the General Assembly of the State of Iowa. Question now is, shall the bill pass? Those in favor of passage vote aye. Those opposed vote no. The clerk will receive your vote. Burns votes aye. Hine votes aye. Hartzell votes aye. Ruff votes aye. Vanderlinden votes aye. Yes. Klein votes aye. Lundby votes aye. Baltimore votes aye. Have you all now voted? Muehlbauer votes aye. Clerk, closed machine, record your vote. House of Attention results of vote. Those voting aye, 82, nay, 16. Absent not voting, 2. The bill 11 received a constitutional majority. is declared to pass the House. Sorry, the objections to the title. Chair hears none, and the title is agreed to. Chair recognizes you.